And so at this point, you sort of have to learn how to assign oxidation numbers. And so let's go to the next slide, and we'll go over that right now. And so one of the things that you'll have to remember is that whenever you have an atom or a molecule in an elemental state, the oxidation number is set to zero. Another rule you'll have to remember is if you have a monatomic ion, the oxidation number is the same as its charge. All right. All right. Now we have another one. So whenever you see hydrogen in a compound, again, this isn't so much hydrogen by itself as an element, but hydrogen within a compound, most of the time its oxidation number will be set to plus one. So I think I have in small print the times when it isn't plus one is something else, but in this class, we're not gonna worry about that. So you should assume in this class, whenever you see a hydrogen in a compound, its oxidation number is plus one. Same similar deal with oxygen. When oxygen is in a compound, it's bound to other atoms in a compound, its oxidation number is negative two. In small print, you can sort of see sometimes when it's not. Fluorine always has an oxidation number of negative one when it's in a compound. How about chlorine, bromine, and iodine? Well, their oxidation numbers will be negative one unless the compound has oxygen in it. If that is the case, you will have to determine arithmetically what the oxidation number is for chlorine, bromine, and iodine, and I'll show you how to do that in just a second. Now, with all other elements, say for example, like carbon, their oxidation numbers can vary depending on the kinds of other elements that are in the compound. And so you're gonna to have to figure out arithmetically what their oxidation numbers are in the compound. Um, and so here's sort of the rule that you do that with. And it says there, that the sum of the oxidation numbers of atoms in a compound must be equal to the charge on the molecule, which is zero, or the charge of the ion. So let's go ahead now and go through some procedures for figuring out oxidation numbers using these rules. And so let's say you figure out that you have a molecular compound or a polyatomic ion. Um, the first thing you wanna do is if you see a hydrogen, oxygen, or fluorine, assign those oxidation numbers to be plus one, negative two, and negative one respectively. Um, if there is chlorine, bromine, or iodine, you set the oxidation number to be negative one. Unless there is an oxygen in the compound, then you're gonna have to figure out arithmetically what its oxidation number is. And so there I'm just sort of indicating what that procedure is and part C, it says, find the oxidation number of the other elements by noting that all the oxidation numbers must add up to zero if there's no charge on the molecule. Um, if on the other hand, if you're looking at a polyatomic ion, then the oxidation numbers of all the atoms in the polyatomic ion must add up to the charge of the polyatomic ion. So to give you some examples of this, let's go ahead and figure out the oxidation numbers of all the elements in those two molecules I have right there, okay? And so the first molecule is called carbonic acid, so it's H2CO3. And so our goal is to find an oxidation number for hydrogen, an oxidation number for carbon, and an oxidation number for oxygen. So let's go ahead and figure this out using the rules that we know. Um, so you may recall one of the first rules is that you can assume that the oxidation number for hydrogen is always plus one. So we'll put there an oxidation number of hydrogen of plus one. For oxygen, you can assume it's negative two. So now, how do you figure out the oxidation number of carbon? So what you have to do is a little arithmetic. So here's what has to happen. You need hydrogen's oxidation numbers when added to carbon's oxidation number, when added to oxygen's oxidation number. They must all be equal to, if it is a molecular compound, which it is, they must all be equal to zero, okay? So let's figure out um, what is the total oxidation number contributed by two hydrogens. It's gonna be two of plus one, right? So what is the total 
oxidation number contributed by three oxygens. Well, it's going to be what? Three times negative two. So we have here from hydrogen a total of plus two oxidation number. And for oxygen, we have a total of negative six oxidation number. So the question is this. What must carbon's oxidation number be when you add it to plus two and then you add it to negative six and so that you get zero? And I think you can see that that carbon there must have an oxidation number of plus four. So here the answer is plus four. Okay, so let's do another one. And so the next one is we have looks like the nitrate ion. So it's NO3 minus. So we need to find the oxidation number of nitrogen and the oxidation number of oxygen. All right. So oxygen in this class, if it's part of a compound, always has an oxidation number of negative two. Now, if it was oxygen by itself as an element, it'd be an oxidation number of zero. But here you can see it's part of a compound, so its oxidation number is negative two. Now, nitrogen, you're going to have to figure out what the oxidation number is. So how do you do that? Well, you keep in mind that the oxidation number of nitrogen, when added to three oxidation numbers of oxygen, which are negative two, should be equal to negative one. So it should be something like this. We have nitrogen and we have oxygen. And so here, the oxidation numbers here should add up to negative one. Okay, so with oxygen here, Looks like we have three of them, so it's three times the oxidation number negative two, which is negative six. And then what we have here is we need to figure out what must nitrogen's oxidation number be when added to negative six gives you negative one. Well, it must be plus five. So the oxidation number of nitrogen is plus five. All right, moving on. Okay, so these examples are were where you had either a molecular compound or a polyatomic ion. So now let's go over examples where your compound is an ionic compound. How do you find oxidation numbers for the elements in an ionic compound? Well, the first thing you have to do is determine what the ions are and their charges. Um, if you have monatomic ions, then the oxidation number is the same as the charge of the monatomic ion. So for example, if you have an ion that is, say, uh, two negative, that means its oxidation number will be negative two. If you have a polyatomic ion, you first have to assign hydrogen and oxygen's oxidation numbers to be plus one and negative two, and then find the oxidation numbers of other elements in the polyatomic ion using the rule that we were using before, whereas the sum of all the oxidation numbers of the elements in that polyatomic ion must be equal to the charge of the polyatomic ion. So let's go ahead and figure out the oxidation numbers for these ionic compounds here. And so we have sodium, sulfate, and so we're needing to find the oxidation number of sodium, sulfur, and oxygen. Okay, so first off, let's confirm that we have an ionic compound here. And so you would look in your periodic table, the location of sodium, and you would see that it's in the first group, which makes it a metal. And here, what you can see is sulfur and oxygen are more to the right side of the periodic table, and so those are nonmetals. So this confirms that we have an ionic compound that's made of ions. So we now sort of have to figure out what the ions of this ionic compound are. And so what I'm hoping you'll know at this point is because sodium is in the first group, um, when it ionizes, it just loses one electron, and so it should have a positive charge. Here, sulfate, this is a polyatomic ion whose charge hopefully you'll have memorized, and so it's SO4 two minus. Now we can figure out the oxidation numbers of all these elements. And so here we have plus in a monatomic, a single atom, ion. And so the oxidation number of a monatomic ion is the same as its charge. So if sodium has a single plus charge, then the oxidation number for sodium should be plus one. Okay, how about the oxidation numbers for sulfur and oxygen? Well, Oxygen here is part of a compound, right? 
when it's part of a compound, its oxidation number is negative two. Now, can you figure out the oxidation number of sulfur? Well, um, what you'll have to do is remind yourself that the oxidation number of sulfur, when added to all of the oxidation numbers of the four oxygens, should be a negative two. And I'm kind of hoping you can work this out on your own, but I'm hoping that you see that the oxidation number of sulfur is plus six. Why would that be? Well, when sulfur is plus six, you have four oxygens which are negative two for a total of negative eight. So sulfur plus six plus oxygens total of negative eight will be equal to negative two. So that is fine. Okay, so let's do the next compound. And so here we have copper chloride, which is CuCl2. All right. So here, first, we might want to figure out if this is an ionic compound or not. And copper is a metal, chlorine is a nonmetal, so it's an ionic compound. And so you have to figure out what the charges of these ions here. So chlorine is not too difficult. Chlorine has a single negative one charge because it's a halogen. Now copper is a little trickier, and the reason is this is a polyvalent ion, meaning it can have, say, a plus one charge or a plus two charge. In order to assign the oxidation number of the copper ion correctly, you have to figure out if copper is plus one or copper is plus two. So you remember how to do that? Well, note that each chloride ion is a negative one. There are two of them there, right? So here in this compound, we have a total of two negative charges. So if you have one copper ion, what must be the charge of that one copper ion so that it balances two negative charges from chlorine? Well, that one copper ion must be two plus. And so at this point, oxidation numbers are easy. So in this particular compound, copper has an oxidation number of plus two, and chlorine has an oxidation number of negative one. Okay, so let's move on. Okay, so now we have some more examples here, maybe a little bit more difficult. So let's go through them. All right, so here, let's figure out what the oxidation number is of gold. So this is the symbol of gold, which is AU. And I'm hoping that you can see that this is just a free element. And so if you have a free element, then its oxidation number should be zero. Okay, now how about for the next molecules? So we have nitrogen here. And so what we're doing is trying to find the oxidation number of the nitrogen atoms in this molecule. Now, again, we have a free element here. Now, it turns out that the particles happen to have two atoms of it bound together, but it's still a free element. Again, the reason is, is because there are no other different kind of elements bound to it to make a compound. So this is just a free element. So nitrogen's oxidation number, even though you have two of them in this molecule, nitrogen's oxidation number is zero. Okay, let's move on to the next one, a little bit more difficult. So we have carbon tetrachloride. We have CCl4. And here we're trying to figure out the oxidation number for carbon and the oxidation number for chlorine. Okay, the first question you might want to ask is, is carbon tetrachloride, is this a molecular compound, a polyatomic ion, or is this an ionic compound? And I'm hoping what you'll recognize is carbon is a nonmetal, chlorine is a nonmetal, so this is a molecular compound, all right? So let's figure out what the oxidation numbers are for the rules for a molecular compound. Do we have any hydrogen or oxygen in this compound? No, we don't. Do we have any fluorine in this compound? No, we don't. Do we have chlorine, bromine, or iodine in this compound? Yes, we do. Are those elements, in this case chlorine, bound to oxygen in the compound? No. So if you have chlorine, bromine, or iodine, and oxygen is not in the compound, we can assume that the oxidation number for chlorine is negative one. So can you figure out what the oxidation number for carbon would be? So it would be this. Um, let me work over here. So we need the oxidation number of carbon when added to all the oxidation numbers of chlorine 
is going to be equal to what? This is a molecular compound, so it's a neutral compound, so this is going to be zero. And so you can see that the oxidation number of chlorine is negative one, and we have four of them there, right? So we have a total of negative four from the chlorine, so what must be the oxidation number of the carbon? It must be plus four. So the carbon here is going to be plus four. All right, let's do the next one. So now we have a polyatomic ion. This is called bromate. It's BrO3 minus. And so what we have to do is figure out the oxidation number of bromine and the oxidation number of oxygen. All right, so here we have a polyatomic ion. So the first question we might ask is, do we have hydrogen, oxygen, or fluorine in this polyatomic ion? Yes, we do have oxygen. When oxygen is in a compound, in this class, you assume its oxidation number is negative two. Okay, now bromine. You might remember one of the rules is, is that when you have chlorine, bromine, or iodine, its oxidation number is negative one, except if there is oxygen in the compound. So because bromine is bound to oxygen, its oxidation number is not negative one. So you have to figure out what the oxidation number of bromine is by simple arithmetic. So let's go ahead and try to figure that out. So we have bromine here. We're gonna to try to figure out its oxidation number. And when added to oxygen's oxidation numbers, and so what we have here is negative two. Um, and then we have three of those, right? They must be equal to the charge of the polyatomic ion, which is negative one. And so here, what oxidation number must bromine be when add to negative six gives you negative one? It must be plus five. So bromine here is plus five, okay? Um, what is the oxidation number of Al3 plus. Well, I'm hoping you can sort of recognize that Al3 plus is a monatomic ion. So this is an aluminum ion. You can see its charge is three plus. That means its oxidation number will be plus three. Okay, and then the last one looks like we have an ionic compound. It's magnesium carbonate. Okay, the way I know that this is on a compound is magnesium is a metal, it's in group two, and carbonate is CO3, that's a polyatomic ion. Um, so another way you can think about it is magnesium is a metal and carbon oxygen are non-metal, so that makes it an ionic compound. So now what we have to do, we have to figure out what the ions are here. So magnesium is a two plus ion, all right, sounds good. And then carbonate is CO3 two minus. Now, can you figure out what the oxidation numbers are for magnesium, carbon, and oxygen are? Well, magnesium has a two plus charge and so its oxidation number is plus two because magnesium is a monatomic ion and so its oxidation number should be the same as its charge. Now we have a polyatomic ion here. How do we figure out the oxidation numbers of carbon and oxygen? Oxygen in a compound always has an oxidation number of negative two for this class. Can you figure out, given that there are three oxygens and the total negative charge of the compound is negative two, what would be the oxidation number for carbon? Well, let's figure it out. So each oxygen has an oxidation number of negative two. There are three oxygens here. So the total oxidation number contributed by oxygen is going to be negative six. So what oxidation number must carbon be when added to negative six gives you negative two? Well, it must be plus four. Okay. Now we move on. And so the last thing I want to do is I want to look at some chemical reactions and figure out which reactants are being oxidized and which reactants are being reduced by looking at their oxidation numbers. So let's look at this first chemical reaction. So we have sodium here and it's reacting with water and it gives us sodium hydroxide 
and hydrogen gas. Okay, so our goal is to figure out of these two reactants here, which is being oxidized and which is being reduced. So the way I would do it at this point is by oxidation number. So let's figure out what the oxidation numbers are of the elements here in these reactants. Okay, so we have sodium here. So you can see that sodium here is not an ion, okay? Um, it would be an ion if there was a plus here or negative here. It is not an ion. It's a free element. It's neutral. If that is the case, then the oxidation number is zero. Okay, water is a molecular compound. And so the first thing you do is you look to see um, what you have in the molecular compound, you have oxygen and hydrogen, so that's pretty easy. So the oxidation number of oxygen is negative two. That of hydrogen is plus one. Okay, now let's go over to the product side. Here we have an ionic compound, which is sodium hydroxide. So this will separate into sodium ions, which are Na plus, and hydroxide ions, which are OH minus. So sodium, is a ion here, sodium plus, and therefore its oxidation number in this compound is plus one. How about hydroxide? Um, well, here's the way I sort of think about it. Um, if you have hydroxide, okay, um, so oxygen always has an oxidation number of negative two, hydrogen always has an oxidation number of plus one. So the question is this if you have one oxygen, of negative two and one hydrogen of plus one, what do they add up to be? They add up to be negative one, which matches the total charge of hydroxide. So it looks like the oxygen in this compound, as expected, is gonna be negative two, and the hydrogen in this compound is gonna be plus one. Finally, another product here is hydrogen gas. So Hydrogen here is by itself, there are two atoms of it bound together, but it's by itself in the sense that it's not bound to a different element. And so if that's the case, the hydrogen atoms here, their oxidation numbers are zero. Okay, so at this point, can you figure out which of these reactant atoms or reactants is gonna be oxidized and which one's gonna be reduced? Okay, so now let's go ahead and look at changes of oxidation numbers and see if we can identify the element that is being oxidized and the element that is being reduced. All right, so for example, let's just take a look at oxygen for a second. So here we have oxygen in the reactant, its oxidation number is negative two. Then we have oxygen in the product. Does this oxidation number change? No, it's still negative two. Therefore, oxygen, because its oxidation number is not changing, is neither being oxidized or reduced. Okay, let's look at sodium. Well, sodium here has a reactant, is an oxidation number of zero. As a product, it has an oxidation number of plus one. So one of the things you can see is that sodium's oxidation number as you go from reactant to product is getting more positive. And so if that is the case, it's increasing, so it's being oxidized. So here, sodium, because it's being oxidized, is considered to be the reducing agent. Okay, now let's look at hydrogen. So here in the reactant, which is water, hydrogen has an oxidation number of plus one. But in one of the products, hydrogen is plus one, but in this other product, hydrogen has an oxidation number of zero. So we do see a place where hydrogen's oxidation number is changing from plus one to zero. So if that occurs, that means that it's either being oxidized or reduced if it's, the number is changing. And so it's getting more negative. So hydrogen here, this is being reduced and this is the oxidizing agent. Okay, let's do another one. Okay, so now we have this reaction here, which is KClO3 gives you KCl plus oxygen. So what I did is I went ahead and balanced this equation. 
So the first question you might ask is, um, when you see coefficients in front of these formulas, does this change anything in terms of figuring out oxidation numbers? The answer is no, it does not. And so when you figure out the oxidation numbers, just ignore the coefficients in the equation. That's probably the best thing to do. Okay, so let's figure out what the oxidation numbers of, are of all these elements in these compounds. Um, so here we have a reactant here. So I'm gonna maybe do this a little bit faster just to speed things along here. So the oxidation number of oxygen in any compound is gonna be negative two. Now, KClO3, what is K? Well, um, I'm hoping you can see that KCl3 is an ionic compound here. And so this is gonna separate into potassium ions and chloride ions. Potassium ions always have a charge of one plus, therefore its oxidation number should be plus one. Now, how about chlorine here? How would you figure that out? Um, well, there are a number of ways you can figure that out. But let's see, what I get for an oxidation number for chlorine would be, let's see, it's going to be plus 5. Okay. Um, how did I figure that out? Okay, I'll show you really quick. So we have chlorine oxidation number and oxygen's oxidation number must be equal to the charge of chlorate, which is negative 1. And so here we have um, three oxidation numbers of negative two. So what must be the oxidation number of a single chlorine atom to give you negative one? It must be plus five. So that's how I figure that out. So you'll have to get pretty quick at assigning oxidation numbers, and I can appreciate that it can be a bit of a pain, but you'll get used to it. Okay, so potassium chloride here is an ionic salt. It releases to produce potassium ions, which are one plus, and chloride ions, which are one negative. So the oxidation number of potassium is plus one. The oxidation number of chlorine is negative one. Finally, we have oxygen here as a free element, so its oxidation number is zero. Okay, so what is being oxidized and what is being reduced? First question, could what is being oxidized and what is being reduced be in the products? No, it has to be in the reactants, okay? So first off, is potassium being oxidized or reduced? The answer is no, because its oxidation number is not changing, okay? So how about chlorine? What's going off chlorine? It's going from positive five to negative one. So it's getting more negative in terms of oxidation number. So if it's getting more negative, what that means is it's being reduced. So chlorine is the oxidizing agent. Now what is happening to oxygen here? So oxygen starts out with an oxidation number of negative two. Um, it ends up as a product as zero. So it is getting a more positive oxidation number here. So oxygen here is being oxidized. Okay. Thank you for listening to that and we'll see you next time.